Hi, I'm Dave Wiegener. I come to you all the way from Christchurch, New Zealand, with chess on YouTube daily, other than that of Sundays, for obvious reasons. Today's date is the 13th of November 2017. This is week 53, session number one, and my one year birthday for placing videos and that on YouTube is on the 15th, two days away from now. So it's pretty important to me. And when I put YouTube videos on first, I didn't know what I was doing. And I probably still don't. So here is a position where white has just met knight f3 into their position. This knight here has just moved to f3 on move um, 27. And white's pieces are basically stalemated. It's a rare situation. Now the players. White is E. Majerimov from Baku, Russia. And Gary Kasparov is black, obviously. When one looks at this position, it looks like the sort of position that Gary would have. Now I find this position very instructive and very interesting at the same time. As you can see, Black's pieces are all involved in the uh, onslaught and that on the White King. As previously mentioned, Gary does not relent when it comes to involving all of his forces uh, typical here as well. So now we're going to go over you can have a lot of this position you can savour it and if that if you wish to see this game it is actually under uh, Majurimov's um, games on on the internet and his initial is E and this was played in 1977 as a training match between the, the pair in Baku. So here we go. This is the, the analysis from David Wiegenau's point of view as well as that of the book Fighting Chess, My Games and Career by Gary Kasparov. So here we go. These are the variations. Now First of all, knight f3, if this, then that will not do. I've got to turn this engine off, the engine's on. So rook f3, and it's pretty final really, isn't it? Because what white is threatened with, is say we just play a, a, there's nothing really much to do here. Say we play a3, well, white just is met by this, and not rook takes, because it's impossible, and the only move is king here, and queen here, and queen here checkmate, okay, so that's not any good for white, not that it's any good at all, of course, so we've got the, the starting positions here, what if I hear you say, bishop d3, okay, new variation, what does white get met with now, according to Gary Kasparov's book, where is checkmate? Is checkmate anywhere? Yes, it is. Now, is it anywhere? We can we can play rookie one. And that would be all right, but not really. Knight h2 is checkmate. Because as you can appreciate, the rook cannot take the knight on h2. So that's pretty, 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 isn't it? And we've got this move here, knight d5, new variation. We've got, now what does white get met with? This one, it's similar to the previous. Rook d1, more or less forcing bishop d1, check, oh, because it's check, knight h2, checkmate, and beautiful. Isn't it horrible for white?
Next up, we've got Queen G3. Now this is a probably just about the best line for white that I can find, or that the book has from Gary's point of view. Knight D2 check. King E1. Whoop G3. And now Whoop G3. Knight F3. What a crazy move, eh? Because the rook can take the knight, but then the queen can just take back because the bishop is pinned by the rook and the king on e1. So white would play best king f2 here. And then Gary Kasparov gives knight g1. Maybe not the move I would play. And thereafter. And if we play here, we've got knight h3 check and that's reasonably comfortable for black to win this with 5 versus 3 pawns for black's favour and also a knight and a rook versus a knight and a bishop I could go over at that and now analyse it but I don't wish to here at this point this is purely this position here that I find highly instructive and interesting. So we will continue on with after knight f3 that Gary played. And note again, all black's pieces a la Gary Kasparov are in the fray. The all in white's face. So the moves were the following rook h1, rook d e3, else we're going to lose a rook, king, uh, no, not king g1, rook g1, king h8, a pretty surprising move really. Rook h1 and b5 breaks white's resistance. We're intending for black b4 and then rook takes etc. So once the knight moves, rook e2 is pretty f finale. We'll give you an example. And also here, a3, a5. Now white cannot play, can play, but can't really play b4 to prevent b4 from black. But then they would just be met with rook takes knight if b4. Okay, so after a5, um, of course bishop f3 is no good because of rook f3. And we're winning major material here for black. Um, so if knight b5 we'll just say then rook e2 is pretty final I'm sure you can see that because rook e2 and the rook can't take back but the king's more or less forced to take it back can play other moves but they're pretty feeble really um, and if this then we can just about go knight takes here or we can just take knight here and it's all over after knight g1 etc so I hope you like that wee little um, position I certainly do, I think it's fantastic what an embodiment of pieces all glued to the king's defence and attack it's just awesome that's my lesson for today I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. See you next time on The Muppet Show.